I am not encouraging or advising anyone to recreate or attempt these experiments. They involve dangerous chemicals that can be hazardous to your health if not properly handled. This is not a tutorial. This is for entertainment and informational purposes only. I do gunsmithing as a hobby. That will be clear if you check out any of the other videos on my channel. I am interested in touching up the finish on firearm barrels and slides after I do machining on them. Generally, if gun parts are stainless steel, they will be 400 series or 17.4 and have some sort of black oxide finish on them. Of course, touching up carbon steel is easy with cold blue, but that doesn't work on stainless steels. I figured I would do some experiments on multiple grades of stainless steels and see how well I can turn them black, what the best way to prep them is, and if any treatment after the blackening will provide improved appearance and durability. First, I will provide some uh, context and scope of what I'm trying to achieve. I will give some general introductory information on the iron carbon material system and stainless steels. Then I'm going to introduce these uh, specific stainless steels that I will be experimenting with, what differentiates them from a material science and mechanical properties standpoint. Next, I will explain how I'm going to prep my pieces, what chemicals I will be uh, using, to, and then I will carry out the experiments. I will try my best to explain what is happening at the surface of the part and why certain preparation techniques may work better than others. I will wrap it all up with a summary of what I found is the best method for the results I'm trying to achieve. As with all my videos, timestamps will be provided so you can skip around as you please. I will also include links to a bunch of reference information, including all the pictures and diagrams I used in this video. I am a mechanical engineer and in my undergraduate studies, I put a bit more emphasis on material science because it was really fascinating to me. So some stuff I may present uh, might not have directly linked sources if I misspeak or present false information. Feel free to correct me in the comments. But also, you know, try to provide sources. I always like it when others chime in with their experience and knowledge. It helps me learn and provide supplementary information to others watching. So please join the conversation. I am keeping the scope of these experiments to processes that are easy for me to do at home with easy to source chemicals. I would like to use common household equipment and avoid elevated temperatures as well. I will be testing commonly available grades of uh, stainless steel in addition to some that are a little bit more specific to firearms. I'm looking to simply blacken a freshly machined area of a stainless steel part for aesthetic purposes. I also hope to be able to use this uh, to touch up damaged finishes on stainless steel parts. Uh, this is not intended for large area coverage. Um, this could be considered decorative, but I hope I can get some durability uh, scratch and wear resistance out of the finish. I want to take some time to go over the iron carbon material system. Steel is iron and carbon. All stainless steels contain iron and carbon. We can look at this phase diagram and see where these crystal structures I will be talking about later come from. Different grades of stainless steels have their atoms arranged in different ways or in different crystal lattices, and this affects their mechanical, physical, and magnetic properties and their corrosion resistance. This phase diagram you see on the screen is that of the iron carbon FEC system. It shows what phases of the material can be expected based on temperature and carbon content. This material system is one of the most widely studied out there as it is so common for so many applications. I studied it quite a lot as a mechanical engineering student because we would need to be designing a lot of stuff with steel and its alloys. On the y-axis, we have temperature. On the x-axis, we have carbon content. Uh, you can see the x-axis only goes up to 6.67% carbon by weight, and there is a delineation of steels and cast irons with steels having lower carbon content. You can see areas where it says liquid, which is where the metal will be melted, but you can see that what temperature the steel melts varies with carbon content and what phase or phases are present. You can also see uh, the different phases called ferrite, uh, austenite, and some microstructures that may be present in some quantity within these phases, such as perlite or Fe3C, which is cementite or iron carbide. Another diagram we can look at is the time temperature transition or TTT diagram. Uh, this shows us the kinetics of phase transformation based on time and temperature. Metallurgists may use this diagram to estimate time and temperature for a quenching or heat treatment process of a steel alloy based on the mechanical properties or phases that they want. You can see here there's a phase called martensite, which is another common one that we will be discussing. To visualize crystal structure, a unit cell or unit lattice is used. This is a single unit of a larger repeating crystal structure of atoms. Uh, here are some common ones. As it relates to our discussion, we will primarily be considering austenite and martensite phases. Austenite takes on a face-centered cubic arrangement, and martensite is going to be body-centered cubic or body-centered tetragonal. 
Of course, this is a very simplified diagram showing one size of atom in a perfect arrangement. The stainless steels we will be considering are around 70% iron minimum, so the crystal structure of the alloy will be determined by the crystal structure of the iron. The alloying element atoms can arrange themselves in this lattice via substitution where they take the place of an iron atom. This generally happens if they are similar in size or mass to the iron atom, or the smaller, lighter elements like carbon can be interstitial uh, impurities, meaning they will hang out in the little voids between the larger iron atoms. There are also grains, which are kind of like chunks or bands of a crystal structure in a certain orientation. Kind of think about like the grain of uh, a tree or a board or something like that. Um, and it has, you know, neighboring grains that may be the same crystal structure, but at a different angle or orientation or some other crystal structure phase present in the system. Smaller elements can also pin themselves to these grain boundaries, which can be very important for mechanical properties and strength. There are people who study a single material system and its phase diagram their whole career. I'm barely scratching the surface and just giving a high level overview here. I wanted to give some context of where these phases I will be discussing come from. Let's get into the different types of stainless steels I will be testing. First, let's look at the 300 series. I have samples of 303, 304, and 316. These are all very common grades of stainless steel. They are going to have an austenitic crystal structure. The primary constituents of the composition will be iron, about 70%. Carbon, generally less than 0.15%, which is a very small amount, but has a huge impact on mechanical properties. Chromium, usually 18 to 30%, and nickel, 8 to 16%. Chromium is what gives stainless its well, stainless properties. I will go into more detail about uh, that when I talk about surface prep of the samples. What differentiates 300 series stainless steel will be concentration and types of alloying elements. For example, 316 has more nickel than 304 and 316 contains molybdenum where 304 does not. 300 series cannot be heat treated but it can be hardened by cold working. Uh, they will generally be non-magnetic or very slightly magnetic. Keep in mind they are still about 70% iron. The reason they are not magnetic is due to the austenitic crystal structure. For whatever reason, the way the atoms are arranged, they don't respond to magnetic fields. Fucking magnets, how do they work? Due to their crystal structure and higher chromium content, they will have the best corrosion resistance. They will also generally have better mechanical properties at higher temperatures and will tend to be more ductile than the 400 series. Okay, onto the 400 series. This is a piece of 416 heat treated stainless steel. I've got it from McMaster Car. It was like 10 bucks. I picked this one because it's going to be similar to 416R stainless steel, which is specific to rifle and pistol barrels, which again is what I'm hoping to blacken after I do machine work on them. The 400 series will be a martensitic crystal structure. The primary constituents of the composition will be iron, around 80%, so more than 300 series. Carbon, 0.1 to 1%, again, more than the 300 series. They will have less chromium than the 300 series, like 11 to 27%, and rather than nickel, they contain manganese, around 1%. 400 series can be heat treated, they will be magnetic, they have less corrosion resistance than the 300 series, and they will be uh, harder, more wear resistant, and brittle than the 300 series due to the increased carbon content. The last one I will be discussing and testing is pretty common. I think it's a pretty cool material. It's a 17-4 precipitation hardened stainless steel. This is some super tough stuff. I chose this because um, high-end pistol slides will be machined out of this. Once again, that's what I'm trying to blacken. I was able to snag some scraps from work. We use this stuff quite a bit. 17.4 is kind of like a weird mix of 300 and 400 series as far as I can tell. It's harder and more wear resistant and can be heat treated like the 400 series. It has a martensitic crystal structure like the 400 series, but it contains nickel like the 300 series. It has around 15 to 17.5% chromium, so kind of on the lower end of chromium content. It has good mechanical properties at elevated temperatures and good corrosion resistance like the 300 series, but it will generally be easier to machine than the 300 series as it is less likely to work harden and it's not so ductile. It also is going to be one of the easiest to weld of all the stainless steels. Chemicals I have for this process are a 1% uh, Alkanox uh, cleaner degreaser in deionized water. I have some dilute hydrochloric acid. This is the um, stainless steel blackening kit from Caswell. I like their chemicals. I've used Caswell chemicals for a lot of projects and they seem to be pretty good quality. 
I got the uh, the stainless steel blackening gel because since this is going to be just, you know, small touch-ups and stuff, I figured it would be easier to kind of have a thicker gel that would stay in place on the workpiece. With the gel comes their sealer, uh, so I'm going to try this stuff and see how it works to um, change the appearance of the blackening or make it more durable and stuff like that. Going to be using some Q-tips for cleaning everything, um, some isopropyl alcohol for cleaning stuff. Of course, I got nitrile gloves, PPE, you know, safety glasses, keep stuff out of my eyes. And then I got some uh, little individually wrapped cotton polishing cloths for uh, finishing work as well. Before talking about how I will be prepping these work pieces, I want to go over what makes stainless, well, stainless. Understanding what is going on at the surface will help us understand how we can get the best results. Stainless steel is stainless because of the added chromium, and in the case of the 300 series and the 17.4, the added nickel. The chromium at the surface turns into chromium oxide, which is very inert and doesn't interact with much or corrode. The process by which the chromium oxide forms is called passivation. Passivation will happen naturally as the chromium at the surface interacts with the oxygen in the air. I don't really know how quickly this happens after fresh metal is exposed to the atmosphere, but I think it's almost instantly. The chromium layer will then become more continuous and thick with exposure time to the atmosphere. This passivation process can be forced. Pickling or chemical passivation is done with nitric acid. This dissolves away the iron and other trace elements from the surface while at the same time oxidizing the chromium, creating that passive layer. I believe that this blackening chemical works by the same mechanism as uh, regular cold blue that is interacting with the iron at the surface to create the black iron oxide Fe304. If the surface of the stainless steel has this you know, passive layer of chromium oxide on it, that will not allow the chemicals to get at the iron and interact with it. That's why I have hydrochloric acid. Rather than passivating the surface like nitric acid, the hydrochloric acid eats away the chromium oxide and can actually cause stainless steel to corrode. I would imagine sodium hydroxide or caustic lye, which also likes to attack oxides of metal, would have the same effect. I chose hydrochloric acid because in my research it seemed that muriatic acid, which is another name for hydrochloric, is commonly used to chemically etch stainless. I also saw some instructions on blackening stainless steel chemicals from another supplier that recommend prepping the surface with muriatic acid. Looking at the SDS for this blackening chemical, its main constituent is hydrochloric acid, which I am guessing is there to etch away this chromium oxide so that the other acids in the solution can interact with the iron to make the black oxide. I am hoping by pre-treating the surface with hydrochloric before the blackening chemical, I can allow it to work better and make a more robust and uniform finish. To prep all these work pieces, I will first wipe them down with isopropyl alcohol, then degrease them with this 1% Alkanox solution. I will check that I have water break free, which means I shouldn't see any water beat up at all. Water beating up is an indication of oils on the surface that will block my chemicals from doing what they need to do. Then I will grind two notches in the material with my Dremel and a sanding drum. One notch will just have the blackening chemical put right on it. The other notch I will treat with hydrochloric acid, then put the blackening chemical on it. This will simulate a part with a freshly machined surface, which is what I'm interested in refinishing. I will also put the chemical just on, you know, the untouched surface of the part and then uh, use the hydrochloric acid and then the blackening chemical to see if I can refinish the surface of stainless steel that has had significant time to passivate and hasn't been machined. Another quick experiment I'll be doing is uh, seeing if I can use my normal cold blue solution after the surface has been etched with hydrochloric acid because this chemical is a lot cheaper and easier to get. Lastly, I will be testing this sealer that came with the stainless steel blackening kit from Caswell on the differently prepped than blackened surfaces to see what effect it has on finish and durability. So that was a lot of introductory information. I hope it was helpful and made sense. Uh, now on to the actual experiments. Here we go with the uh, 303 stainless. Um, first, I'm just wiping down the whole part with my um, isopropyl alcohol. I am marking an area and cleaning it with my degreaser. Got some water in a dish to check water break free. It was still beating up a little bit, so I went back and degreased it one more time and rechecked water break free, and it looked good. Putting some of the blackening chemical where I just degreased. 
and then next to that I'm putting the hydrochloric acid and letting it sit there and etch the surface. So on the left here, this was not prepped with hydrochloric acid, and on the right, it was prepped with hydrochloric acid. Um, I let it sit on there for about three minutes, and you can see that the finish is a lot uh, darker um, and a lot more uniform. So it seems like prepping the surface with the hydrochloric acid is going to be uh, good for the results I'm trying to achieve. Here I'm just using my uh, Dremel and sanding drum to cut the two notches. Again, going through the same cleaning process, isopropyl alcohol and then the, um, the Alkanox degreaser. After that, I'm putting the blackening chemical right in one of the machined areas, and then on the one next to it, I am putting some hydrochloric acid and letting it sit there and etch the surface. and putting the blackening chemical on the spot where I put the hydrochloric acid. So results on a freshly um, cut piece of the material, no muriatic acid, and with muriatic acid, the results look to be about similar. So it seems that if the uh, material is disturbed and it doesn't have a lot of time to um, create that passive oxide layer on the surface of it, uh, maybe I can omit the um, hydrochloric acid prep of it. This piece was already marked and cleaned with alcohol and then degreased, and so here I'm just putting the hydrochloric acid on it, letting it sit for a little bit, marking the area where I put the acid, taking the hydrochloric acid off and applying my blackening chemical. So that's been sitting about three minutes. Um, it definitely uh, changed color slower than the 303. Hmm. A lot of that kind of, oh wow, it's kind of wiping off almost. On 304, it looks like maybe longer time is needed for the chemicals to sit on the surface. Um, so I let the hydrochloric acid sit on there, but it's pretty dilute, so I don't know how well it etched this surface. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, you know, grind a little chunk out of this and see how it will take the, uh, the chemical in a freshly ground piece. Now I'm going to give that hydrochloric acid a bit of time to sit on there and let it work that uh, work away at that surface. It says you can leave this stuff on for a maximum of five minutes to reach the depth of color you want, so I'm going to leave this on there for a full five minutes and see what it does to this 304. All right, that's five minutes. Let's wipe this chemical off. Give it a little polish. It's a bit darker, obviously not nearly as dark as the 303, that makes sense. 304 is a bit more corrosion resistant than uh, 303, so it looks like you might have to get a bit more um, aggressive with the, the prep and the hydrochloric acid etching and leaving the blackening chemical to sit on there for longer, maybe multiple treatments. So this is 316 stainless and it has the most corrosion resistance out of the 300 series that I'm going to be testing so I'm guessing this is really going to be difficult to get a nice dark black color on so I'm going to start with some uh, mechanical abrasion, uh, grind out a little chunk of it and then um, do my prep from there and see how, see how dark I can get it.
Okay, it's been five minutes here on this 316 and we have some interesting results. Did not turn it black at all, but you can see, it might be hard to pick up on the camera, but that little ring around where the puddle was right there, that's actually orange rust colored. Yeah, doesn't look like you can blacken 316 stainless, at least with the chemicals that I have. On to the 400 series, this is 416 heat treated. Um, you know, based on the results I saw with the 300 series where more corrosion resistant grades of 300 series were less likely to be blackened by the chemical, leads me to believe this will take the blackening chemical pretty well because 400 series are less corrosion resistant than 300 series. This took the blackening chemical very, very well. Um, that looks that looks really nice. So the last one we're going to test is the 17-4 precipitation hardened stainless steel, and this stuff should have a bit better corrosion resistance than the 400 series. So I'm guessing it won't take the blackening chemical as well. But I'm going to go ahead and just rough up uh, part of the surface right here uh, to give me the best chance. So that 17.4 took the blackening chemical pretty nicely. Doesn't look too bad. Last thing I'm going to do is see if I can chemically etch the 303 and the 416, which took the blackening chemical the best, with the hydrochloric acid and then get them to blue up with regular, you know, carbon steel bluing liquid. It looks like standard cold blue will not work on even the least uh, corrosion resistant types of uh, stainless steel, even if the surface is chemically etched with hydrochloric acid first. So coming back to this uh, 400 series that blackened up really quickly and really nicely, I'm going to treat uh, part of this with the uh, sealer and let it completely dry like you're supposed to and then um, kind of see what the finish looks like and how um, resistant it is to like some polishing action. Let this sealer completely dry, gave it about 10 minutes. I'm just going to give it a little, little rub. You can see this line right here. There's no sealant, there's the sealant. So it gives it a little bit deeper, darker color. It almost gives it kind of like a, almost like a waxy finish. So I don't know, I think, I think that might, that might be a good thing to treat this, uh, the blackened steel with after, after I'm done with it there. That looks, yeah, this black color looks a lot nicer than that one. This is more black, that's more gray. Pretty pleased with these results. Um, so it seems that with the chemicals that I purchased, you know, at room temperature with commonly available equipment, I can blacken 303 stainless steel, 400 stainless steel, and 17.4 stainless steel. And the fact that I can blacken 400 series and 17.4 will work well for the refinishing I need to do on freshly machined firearm parts. Um, of course, once I do 
the uh, machining and refinish it and make it black, time will tell, you know, how well that um, finish holds up, but it seems to be about as robust as uh, cold blue, um, which is about the best I could hope for. You know, it doesn't seem like the more corrosion resistant 300 series, 304, and certainly, you know, not 316 are going to be able to be blackened with uh, these easy to get chemicals at room temperature. I answered the questions that I have. It seems the best way to go about um, prepping these pieces and carrying out the blackening procedure is to uh, wipe them off with alcohol, degrease them, and then put some hydrochloric acid on them to chemically etch the surface back and then apply the blackening gel, let it do its thing for up to five minutes, and then after that apply the um, sealant let it dry completely, and then give it a little polish with a cotton rag. I hope this video was interesting, uh, informative, maybe entertaining. There will be a whole bunch of links with great supplementary information and um, you know a lot of sources from where I got my diagrams in the uh, description if you're interested in learning more about you know stainless steels, iron carbon system, things of that nature. As always, thanks so much for watching.